So here's the problem. If you're using the save the cat method to outline, write, or revise your novel, you know that the catalyst, literally defined as the moment your story finally gets going, doesn't come until the 10% mark. So mathematically speaking, if you have a story that's 400 pages long, that's 40 pages of what? Boring status quo setup where nothing happens? Let's hope not. Or what if you're writing a story for younger readers who have shorter attention spans and you want to get the plot moving sooner, even as soon as, say, page one? Whatever the case may be, there are definitely story scenarios that warrant something big to happen sooner than that 10% mark. So what do you do? Coming up, I have four Catalyst quick fixes that will fix your story right up. Hello, I'm Jessica Brody, author of Save the Cat Writes a Novel and the founder of the Writing Mastery Academy. A question I get a lot from writers following the Save the Cat method is this, how do I get my story moving faster if the catalyst doesn't come until 10%? Hey, it's a valid concern. You don't wanna lose your reader before you even get a chance to ramp up the story. Which is why today I'm sharing with you my four catalyst quick fixes. These are all strategies that you can use to pull the reader into your story faster and ensure they don't give up before you even get to act two. And before I start, if you haven't already downloaded my free Save the Cat Starter Kit, be sure to do that at jessicabrody.com slash starter kit. This free PDF comes with a breakdown of the entire Save the Cat method, plus three full beat sheet analyses of popular novels. I'll also link to that in the description below. Okay, on to the quick fixes. Catalyst quick fix number one, the cryptic illusion. One thing you can do if you're worried about your catalyst coming too late in the story, you can cryptically allude to the catalyst earlier, like perhaps in a prologue. In other words, you reference a big event that's going to completely change the hero's world, but don't actually spell out what it is until the actual event arrives. You may give the reader hints like, before the phone call came, I was a different person, or I'll never forget the night the man in the trench coat knocked on my door and handed me the key. The pull of this tactic is the reader's desire to find out what this big event is that you've alluded to and try to guess what it is before you actually reveal the answer. Take a look at the first chapter of The Kite Runner by Khaled Hassani as a great example, which starts off with a very cryptic phone call that the narrator says changed everything. I also employ this tactic in the small half-page prologue of my novel, The Geography of Lost Things, which starts with the line, by the time the messenger arrived at our front door, Jackson had already been dead two weeks. What did the messenger bring? Who is Jackson? Well, the catalyst will soon reveal all, but before that, I narrate all the events that happened before the messenger arrives, which ultimately serves as my setup beat. Catalyst quick fix number two the flash forward. Another option to quickly fix your catalyst is to start the story with the catalyst. For example, you drop it on the reader like a teaser. Hey, that rhymed. And then back up in time to tell the story leading up to that point. Usually in this scenario, you give the reader more information and a better idea of what the catalyst is, as opposed to quick fix number one, when you only casually cryptically allude to it. But you leave out key bits of information, like for example, how the catalyst came to be or how it ultimately turned out. The pull of this tactic is the withholding of these key bits of information. You've piqued the reader's interest with a semi complete picture of this future event, and now they want to find out exactly how it plays out. Check out Ready Player One to see this strategy in action. Author Ernest Klein starts the book with the catalyst of Wade finding the first key to the Easter egg hunt, and then he backs up in time and narrates how it happened. I also do this in my book Unforgotten, the sequel to Unremembered, which starts with my hero burning at the stake. Why and how does she get out of that? Well, that comes later. Catalyst quick fix number three, the hint dropper. Dropping subtle hints about an upcoming catalyst is another effective way to keep your reader engaged until the actual catalyst arrives. These should be hints that the reader notices, but the hero doesn't, or if they do, they ignore them. 
I employed this tactic in my young adult novel In Some Other Life, which actually has a very late catalyst. It doesn't come until page 48 of a 450 page novel. The catalyst is when Kennedy walks in on her boyfriend Austin kissing her best friend Lainey, and then discovers they've actually been cheating on her for a while. It's a huge shock to her, but savvy readers I'm sure are able to pick up on the clues I dropped. Like the fact that Austin has way more in common with Lainey than Kennedy does, or the fact that Austin and Lainey went to the same coffee shop that morning and claim not to have seen each other, or the moment when Kennedy suggests that Lainey and Austin watch a TV show together while she's at an event that night with her parents, Lainey protests just a tad too much. The idea is that the reader will start to theorize about what the catalyst will be, and keep reading to see if they're right. Remember, readers love to play detective. They love to pick up on subtle clues that the writer leaves them. It's a fun little game that readers and writers play together, each trying to outsmart the other. The writer leaves the clue, wondering if the reader will catch it. The reader picks up on the clue, wondering if the writer expected them to find it. Talk about reader engagement. And finally, my favorite tactic to solve all of your catalyst troubles is called the double bump. This is when you effectively have two, or more than two, catalysts, each serving to move the hero a bit closer to act two. With this strategy, there's usually a very early catalyst that first nudges the story into action as early as page one, and then another catalyst which happens closer to that 10% mark that fully kicks the hero into action, a bump, and then a second bump. Because I enjoy writing these long, luxurious setups, I end up employing this tactic a lot. Like in my novel 52 Reasons to Hate My Father, the catalyst comes on page 38, when spoiled heiress Lexington Larrabee is told she won't be receiving her trust fund of $25 million until she completes 52 low-wage weekly jobs. But because I feared readers might not be willing to read that far, especially because Lexi is such a spoiled brat, I put in a mini catalyst on the very first page, where Lexington Larrabee has just crashed her $500,000 Mercedes into a convenience store on Sunset Boulevard. This event kicks off the story, and I use the aftermath of the event to do all of my setup work, like show how Lexi lives, how spoiled she is, who her friends are, and how fraught her relationship is with her father, etc. This ultimately is the event that inspires her father to make the decision to delay Lexi's trust fund and make her work for the money, which then serves as the second catalyst. There's also another variation of the double bump, which is a catalyst that happens at 10%, and then a second catalyst that happens closer to the break into two beat, like during the debate beat. This variation of the double bump is used for particularly stubborn heroes who just refuse to take a hint and take action after the first catalyst, and therefore a second bump is needed to convince them to do something and finally cross that threshold into act two. So if you're worried your catalyst isn't quite working or comes too late, or maybe you're getting feedback from readers or agents or editors that your story is taking too long to get into, or maybe you're just feeling like your setup beat is a bit of a slog to read, chances are you're in need of one of these catalyst quick fixes. Give one a try and see if it doesn't infuse your story with the extra bump it needs. If you want to learn more about the Save the Cat method, be sure to download that free starter kit, which I'll link to below, and check out my book Save the Cat Writes a Novel, or my Save the Cat online novel writing course, which is available in the Writing Mastery Academy. I post new writing tips regularly on this channel, so be sure to subscribe if you want to catch the next one. Until next time, everyone, happy writing!